blood cells or leukocytes are the colorless and nucleated formed elements of blood. Compared to red blood cells, the white blood cells are larger in size and lesser in number. Yes, these cells are important like the erythrocytes. They're important because of their role in defense mechanism of the body and because they also protect the body from invading organisms by acting like soldiers. White blood cells differ from red blood cells in many aspects. Number one is that they are larger in size. Number two is that they are irregular in shape. Number three is that they are nucleated. Number four is that there are many types of white blood cells. Number five is that granules are present in some types of white blood cells. Number six is that they tend to have a shorter lifespan compared to red blood cells. Now let's talk about the classification of white blood cells. Now, based on the presence or absence of granules in the cytoplasm of white blood cells, the leukocytes are classified into two groups. Number one, we have the granulocytes. The granulocytes are white blood cells that have granules. Number two is the agranulocytes. The agranulocytes are white blood cells that do not have granules. Now, depending on the staining property of granules, the granulocytes are classified into three types. Number one is the neutrophils, with granules taking both acidic and basic stains. Number two are the eosinophils, with granules taking acidic stain. Number three are basophils, with granules taking basic stain. Our granulocytes actually have plain cytoplasm without granules. Our granulocytes are of two types. We have the monocytes and the lymphocytes. Now let's look at the morphology of white blood cells. Neutrophils are also known as polymorphs. They actually have fine or small granules in their cytoplasm. Neutrophils are nucleated. The nucleus is multi-lobed in nature. The number of lobes in the nucleus depends upon the age of the cell. In younger cells, the nucleus is not lobed, and in older neutrophils, the nucleus has about two to five lobes. The diameter of the cell is between 10 to 12 microns. The neutrophils are amoeboid in nature. Eosinophils have coarse granules in their cytoplasms. Their cytoplasms stay pink or red with eosin. The nucleus is bilobed and spectacle shaped. They have a diameter of 10 to 14 microns. Basophils also have coarse granules in their cytoplasm. The granules actually stain purple blue with methylene blue. They actually have a bilobed nucleus and the diameter of the cell is between 8 to 10 microns. Monocytes are the largest leukocytes with a diameter of 14 to 18 microns. The cytoplasm is clear without granules. The nucleus is round, oval, and horse-shaped in nature. The nucleus is placed either in the center of the cell or pushed to one side, and a large amount of cytoplasm is seen, like monocytes. The lymphocytes also do not have granules in their cytoplasm. The nucleus is oval, bean-shaped or kidney-shaped. The nucleus occupies the whole of the cytoplasm. Now, a rim of cytoplasm may be seen or may not be seen. Now, depending upon the size, lymphocytes are divided into two groups. Number one is the large lymphocytes, which are younger cells with a diameter of 10 to 12 microns. Number two are small lymphocytes, which are older cells with a diameter of 7 to 10 microns. The total white blood cell count is between 4,000 to 11,000 cubic millimeter of blood. Now let us talk about the variations in white blood cell count. Number one is what we call leukocytosis. Leukocytosis is the increase in total white blood cell count. Leukocytosis occurs in both physiological and pathological conditions. Number two is leukopenia. Leukopenia is the decrease in total white blood cell count. Number three is the granulocytosis. Granulocytosis is the abnormal increase in the number of granulocytes. We also have 
granulocytopenia. Granulocytopenia is the abnormal reduction in the number of granulocytes. We also have agranulocytosis. Agranulocytosis is the acute pathological condition that is characterized by absolute lack of granulocytes. We also have physiological variation in white blood cell count. Number one is age. White blood cell count is about 20,000 per cubic millimeter in infants and about 10 to 15,000 per cubic millimeter of blood in children. In adults, it ranges between 4,000 to 11,000 per cubic millimeter of blood. Number two is sex. White blood cells are slightly more in males than in females. Number three is general variation. The white blood cell count is minimum in the early hours of the day and maximum in the afternoon. Number four is exercise. During exercise, there is a slight increase in white blood cell count. Number five is sleep. White blood cell count decreases when an individual is asleep. Number six is emotional conditions like anxiety. During this condition, there is an increase in white blood cell count. Number seven is pregnancy. During, during pregnancy, there is an increase in white blood cell count. Number eight is menstruation. During menstruation, there is an increase in white blood cell count. Number nine is maturation. There is an increase in white blood cell count during childbirth. Now let us look at pathological variations in white blood cell count. Now, leukocytosis, like we earlier said, is the increase in the total leukocytes or total white blood cell count. Now, leukocytosis occurs in conditions such as infections, allergy, common cold, tuberculosis, and glandular fever. Number two is leukemia. Leukemia is a condition which is characterized by abnormal and uncontrolled increase in leukocyte count that is more than 1 million per cubic millimeter. It is also called blood cancer. Leukopenia. Leukopenia is the decrease in the total white blood cell count. It occurs in the following pathological conditions. Number one is anaphylactic shock. Number two is cirrhosis of the liver. Number three is disorders of the spleen. Number four is pernicious anemia. Number five is typhoid and paratyphoid fever. Number six is viral infection. Now, the lifespan of white blood cell is not constant. It actually depends upon the demand in the body and their function. The lifespan of the cells may be as short as half a day, or it may be as long as three to six months. Now, let's talk about the properties of white blood cells. Number one is diapedesis. Diapedesis is the process by which the leukocytes squeeze through the narrow blood vessels. Number two is amoeboid movement. Neutrophils, monocytes, and lymphocytes show amoebic movement, which is characterized by protrusion of the cytoplasm and change in the shape. Number three is chemotaxis. Chemotaxis is the attraction of white blood cells towards the injured tissues by the chemical substances released at the site of injury. Number four is phagocytosis. Neutrophils and monocytes engulf the foreign bodies by means of phagocytosis. Now let's talk about the functions of white blood cells. Now neutrophils play an important role in the defense mechanism of the body. Now along with monocytes, the neutrophils provide the first line of defense against the invading microorganisms. The neutrophils are the free cells in the body and wander freely through the tissues and practically no part of the body is spared by these leukocytes. The eosinophils play an important role in the defense mechanism of the body against the parasites. Now, during parasitic infections, there is a production of a large number of eosinophils which moves towards the tissues affected by parasites. Eosinophil count increases also during allergic diseases like asthma. Eosinophils are responsible for detoxification, disintegration, and removal of foreign proteins. The basophils play an important role in 
healing processes. Their number increases during healing process. Basophias also play an important role in allergy or acute hypersensitivity reactions. This is because of the presence of receptors for immunoglobulin E in basophil membrane. Now, the mast cell is a large tissue cell resembling the basophil. Generally, mast cells are found along with the blood vessels and are prominently seen in the areas such as skin, mucosa of the lungs, and digestive tracts. They are seen in the mouth, in the conjunctiva, and also in the nose. These cells usually do not enter the bloodstream. They play an important role in producing the hypersensitivity reactions like allergy and anaphylaxis. When activated, the mast cell immediately releases various chemical mediators from its granules into the interstitium. Monocytes are the largest cells among the leukocytes. Like neutrophils, the monocytes also are motile and phagocytic in nature. These cells actually wander freely through all tissues of the body. Monocytes play an important role in the defense of the body. Now, along with neutrophils, these nucleocytes provide the first line of defense. Now, lymphocytes play an important role in immunity. Functionally, the lymphocytes are classified into two types, namely the T lymphocytes and the B lymphocytes. The T lymphocytes are responsible for the development of cellular immunity and the B lymphocytes are responsible for the development of humoral immunity. Now, let's talk about leukopoiesis. Leukopoiesis is the development and maturation of leukocytes. Now, committed pluripotent stem cells give rise to leukocytes through various stages. The pluripotent stem cells give rise to two types of cells, which are the lymphoid stem cells and the colony forming blastocytes. The lymphoid stem cell gives rise to lymphoblasts, which eventually gives rise to lymphocytes. The colony forming blastocytes gives rise to colony forming units erythrocytes, colony forming units granulocytes and monocytes, and colony forming units megakarocytes. Of course, the colony forming units erythrocytes gives rise to erythrocytes, while the colony forming units megakarocytes gives rise to platelets. Now, the colony forming units granulocytes and monocytes gives rise to myeloblasts. The myeloblast gives rise to promyelocytes and monoblasts. The monoblast gives rise to promonocytes and promonocytes gives rise to monocytes. The promyelocytes gives rise to neutrophil myelocytes, basophil myelocytes and eosinophil myelocytes. Neutrophil myelocytes gives rise to neutrophil metamyelocytes which eventually gives rise to neutrophil. The basophil myelocytes gives rise to Basophil metamyelocytes, which gives rise to basophil. The eosinophil myelocyte gives rise to eosinophil metamyelocytes, which eventually gives rise to eosinophil. 